Calling for signs. I'm so nervous right now. You're good. Holy shit. Have you ever wondered how much force is generated when a climber falls that weighs 300 pounds? Stick around and find out on this episode of How Not to Lead Fall. Size comparison. Size comparison. <laughs> she catches me a lot. All the time. So Tanner is almost twice as heavy as anybody we've had do these lead fall tests before on this channel. Put your prediction in the comments section whether or not you think the force doubles on everything, and then reply to tell us how you did. In our other tests for reference, the Blair would see about one kilonewton, the climber sees about two or two and a half, and the anchor sees three and a half or four. Now in Hard is Easy's video, they were trying to get the force on the climber to be three kilonewtons and they couldn't do it. Now Tanner did so much work to prepare to make this video. We were able to send him three loner line scale threes that we just got because they're now in stock for the first time in 18 months since their inception. Our first gym fall video was literally why this was invented. There's a $20 off coupon down below if you like to nerd out on stuff but he took the time to study how they worked, how to film horizontal, how to get all these angles, and record all the data. So you can't make videos like this by yourself. So thank you, Katie, Matt, Chris, Lincoln, and Gritstone Climbing for allowing us to have this data that we wouldn't be able to have without them doing all this work. So in these seven tests, Tanner would fall on a light blare, and then a heavier blare, and then a light blare would fall on Tanner, and they even anchored him to the wall, not allowing any absorption of the force, which is the climax of the tests. But in all of the tests, they used a fresh rope or flipped the rope, so there was never a worn out dynamic rope in the system. Now, every time Katie belayed Tanner, they had an ohm in the system. An Edelred ohm is a friction device that when you're leading and you need to pull rope up, doesn't really give you friction. But if you're falling, it'll help the belayer not get pulled up so aggressively towards the thing. However, you're only supposed to have about an 85 pound or 40 kilogram max difference between the climber and the blair and they've got double that free bonus test we got in this video on whether or not that worked out for them so just so you know one kilonewton is 225 pounds of force or 102 kilograms of force and a carabiner will break at about 20 kilonewtons and a bolt will break mm, 20 to 30 to 40 50 or 60 depending on the bolt kilonewtons and a dynamic rope when tied in figure eights the way they're tied in can break at 14 kilonewtons. So it's nice to know how many kilonewtons you're putting on a system so you know if you're super good enough or not. We're here to break gear fear, so let's show you how much force there is. Calling for signs. I'm so nervous right now. You're good. Holy shit. You're good. <laughs> that was the small one. one on mine. 291 online. So before he fell, his waist was about the height of the quick draw. So this was the short fall, but you can see how far he went down. And in the tests I've done, about 2.6 is as high as I've gotten. And Hard as Easy was trying to get to three kilonewtons. So the belayer would literally pick their feet up at the worst possible time, and they got 2.92. So worst case scenario for us is the best case scenario for Tanner. Now, Katie saw the lower end force a blayer typically sees, and that's because she's being lifted up, it has the ohm, and she's only 110 pounds, 50 kilograms. And the highest force that I've ever been able to get on a quick draw is 4.78, and that's because we Z-dragged, which added tons of friction and never lifted the blayer up. So he's getting slightly higher on that anchor than our worst case scenario. Now this next test, he's a little higher where his feet are right about where the quick draw is. Hey! Ask the face! Nice. Three, five, seven. How'd it feel? I mean, other than my head going into your ass. <laughs> believe, believe. So with Tanner just a little bit higher, saw about 20% more force than our worst case scenarios. 
Not quite sure what happens if he goes a lot further than that because that was already sketchy. The next test, they have Chris Blaine him who is 200 pounds or 90 kilograms. Not bad. Three, five, five. Oh, I've got one, one, nine. So we went from a 50 kilogram to a 90 kilogram Blair and the numbers are almost identical. Tell us why in the comments below. Could be the ohm, could be the fact that Chris still got lifted up, uh, could be maybe the way blade, I don't know. But the next test, they took the ohm out. Three, two, one, release. I, that I could not get out of What did I say right before I fell? I said, I'm about to get a CB enema. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't even know what that is. So Chris got to know Tanner probably a little bit better than he was planning. But Tanner and the anchor saw a little bit less force, actually. And there was more force on Chris, which is probably why he got pulled up the way he did. Since everything was super good enough to this point, they thought they'd spice it up a little bit by bolting the Blair to the wall, so there is no give. Save the hardest fall for last. What makes this one different? We are ground anchored. So, there is no shock absorber with the Blair. I mean, the only thing cutting the force is the stretch of the rope. What? I'm zeroed here. Okay, you're solid. Yep. I'm gonna think about it, I just wanna go get it over with. Three, two, one. Oops. Oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, four, four, four. <laughs> Seven, one, six. <laughs> no, I've never, I've never had a hard catch when I fall because even when someone's anchored in, they still lift off the ground a little bit. Like that was, I felt that. I felt, I felt that. <laughs> See some fresh steel. I wasn't there 15 minutes ago. <laughs> it's there now. So I appreciate what people go through for science. I think Tanner set a record on this channel for what you can see in a real life load at the anchor. Seven kilonewtons. That's impressive. For reference, cams will come out right now a part around eight. Now if you're trad climbing outside, you might have a little bit more rope between you and the climber, which technically absorbs more of the fall, even if you were also 290 pounds and falling further. So it's kind of like gets complicated, but it's sure interesting to just kind of like watch somebody catch like that. Ugh. I don't want to belabor this point any more than I need to, but 2.63 is quite a bit on a Blair. Notice the Blair was the wall. I don't think you can really get that on a person because like some of this absorbs it. You always get pulled up a little, like Tanner said. So that's on the high end. And that's kind of makes me feel better knowing that it's only connected to a belay loop. And if you're ever curious what the MBS of a human is, it's more than 4.44. Now there's only one other time on this channel that we have achieved more than 4.44 kilonewtons on a person. Now I don't wanna give it away because I'll be making a whole video on that. <coughs> Subscribe. But uh, that didn't hurt nearly as bad as what Tanner felt because it's force over time and there was a lot more time that force was applied to our bodies. Tanner got the uh, short end of that rope. Now what happens if the same two people switch? What happens if Tanner catches Katie? Oh, it's oh, he lifted me. <laughs> oh, he lifted me. 3.24. That's like a fart in the wind, that's nothing. <laughs> I don't know how much force a fart in the wind generates, but that's approximately one KD falling one body length plus stretch in the rope. Those forces are pretty in line with what we normally get when we do these tests. But what happens if Tanner belays Chris? It looks way different up here than it does. <laughs> nice. 
So on Chris's fall, with Tanner catching him, are pretty much in line with the normal falls that we get. So unless you're really trying to jack the number up by screwing your belayer to the wall, that sounds bad. Then it's probably super good enough. So I think it's important to talk about context. Chris is uh, actually probably considered a large climber and he's you know, right at 200 pounds. So uh, weighing in, I weighed today 290, pretty much uh, double what a lot of average climbers are. Um, so, you know, when, when I generate force from a fall compared to uh, a smaller climber, you know, is that force exponential? Is there a linear pattern to uh, what force is generated by the weight of the climber? And so, you know, when we take the video that, that Ryan did, so we kind of try to replicate that so my feet would be right below the anchor. I think the other thing that is, you know, really awesome about this is just, you know, uh, Ryan's willingness to uh, jump on board. And, you know, I, I was watching one of his videos and he's, you know, he was saying something like, uh, well, you don't have to worry because no climber even weighs a kilonewton. And I just laughed and I said, ah, you know, I thought to myself, yeah, not all climbers uh, weigh just a kilonewton or less. Uh, and so I shot him an email and said, hey, you know, I uh, want, want to thank you for all the content you put out, but also, you know, just for, for the record, uh, you know, I'm a climber and I do weigh more than a kilonewton, uh, 1.3 to 1.4 actually. Uh, and he replied to my, uh, to my email and uh, said, you know, if uh, you're willing to take some leap falls, uh, we'll make a video out of it. And so that's what we did today. All right, I want to say a huge Thank you to Matt Hewlett, who is the GM here at Gritstone Climbing. Uh, happy to help, man. <laughs> uh, a little nerve-wracking, not gonna lie, but uh, pretty cool, pretty cool yeah. data. Yeah, go ahead. What'd you feel from today? <laughs> I felt I became very intimate with your rear end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris Bailey. I'm the owner of Gritstone Climbing and Fitness uh, here in Morgantown, West Virginia. This is West Virginia's largest, I guess, uh, indoor climbing gym great community up here and uh it's been like just seeing everybody come together you know has been really wonderful and yeah. um you know getting to know tanner and, and, and your family and everything uh, so super stoked to uh, participate in this event with you here today cool thanks man so i'd like to apologize and clarify about something i said in my last gym falls video i accidentally said this wrong no climber is more than a kilonewton and that's not what I meant as it was received poorly. I was working with search and rescue people and we're making some videos about that. And when you're trying to do some easy math on the spot that you wanna stay within a 10 to one safety ratio, it doesn't matter if you're small or big, it just kind of averages out. You with the gear on is roughly 225 pounds or 102 kilograms or one kilonewton, because a lot of search and rescue stuff is very static, you're not taking lead, if you're doing it right, you're not taking lead falls in a search and rescue scenario. So after filming too much in one day and being in a rush and cranking out a video faster than I should have, that came out wrong and I do apologize about that. But what's great about that accident is it led to the creation of this video, which I'm sure a lot of people are curious if somebody weighs more, how much more force is it going to generate? because there are people like Tanner who like climbing and they wanna know that they can trust their gear and not have gear fear. And I just opened this up in the mail like an hour ago and this is super cool. This is something you get when you get 100,000 subscribers and it never really seemed possible when I was making slackline videos five years ago that I would get this far. But we've built this community up really well and this video really inspired me because uh, people went out of their way. Like they, Tanner went through so much work, the, the people at the gym went through so much work in order to make this video. And this is such a cool community. And so it's super cool to try to break gear fear for all these extreme sports. And I appreciate you guys because this wouldn't exist without you. Before we go, I wanna show you a fun game that you can do with these, is you can squeeze it to see how much force you can generate. What a load cell is, is basically a wire that goes up and down over here. And it has some electricity going through it. And when you change the shape of the aluminum body it's attached to, it changes how that voltage comes out on the other end. And it measures the little differences of that and gives you a number. Let me hit zero here. 
All right, let's see it. What's that number say? My turn. 1.71. I got caught a cramp in my lat. Welcome to How Not to Highline, where I teach you how not to do everything but highline. There's a few highlining videos, but the rest of it has nothing to do with highlining. Enjoy. And then I have a really annoying laugh in every video. You're going to love it. Hey, guys. Guess what? I gave up on a construction project and all I have is this framework left over. I'm gonna make it seem like it was on purpose by calling it a drop tower. Wow. Okay, so your drop test thing rig literally looks like you are hanging people. Good to know. I know that they're called sound bites because the sound in your videos bites. I'm so popular that I wear all my own merch so that people know that I'm cool. Deep down inside, I know I'm a have I ever mentioned how much I hate hats? You should totally buy these hats, because I don't fucking want them. Yo, I got a lab. Hey guys, today I'm gonna teach you how not to invest. Oh wait, that failed. Hey guys, in this episode of how not to get married, oh sorry, how not to. So, how not to get sponsored. It helps when you insult every company that offers you gear. More companies will just come out of the woodwork to give you more stuff to insult. I am absolutely surprised how many videos you watch. I had no idea until you started roasting them. <laughs> I'm lonely and I need more subscribers, so you should stick around. Give me that duration. Give me some likes, because nobody else likes me. And subscribe so you can like me more in the future. Right about, is it reversed? It's, I think it's right there. Check it out. 